Okay, teardown review time of another LED light bulb. This one's a Cree. It's in a, a BR30 physical format. Um, that's suitable for pot lighting or recessed lighting. Pretty common feature in most uh, modern homes, especially in kitchens. Uh, this bulb uh, looks superficially similar to a bulb that made quite a splash earlier this year. It was an A-shaped bulb from Cree. Uh, that bulb had a really great intersection of uh, engineering, manufacturing, and business smart. So it'll be interesting to see if they carry those uh, really good things forward in the floodlight, see what they had to change to create a floodlight. Um, other than that, uh, what's of course compelling about this series is it's really sharply priced. Just like the A-shaped bulb uh, within this family, uh, this is one of the least expensive flights of light you can get. However, it's got pretty good specs, 65 watt equivalency, 650 lumens, uh, 25,000 hour service life, uh, but uh, even more extraordinary, a 10 year warranty, uh, and that's like a 6 hour per day service life, which is about 22,000 hour warranty. So. Uh, they're definitely wanting to stand behind their product here, it looks like. Uh, other than that, it's soft white and dim and wool uh, with standard uh, dimmers. So that's another big thing. Some earlier LEDs required some extraordinarily expensive dimmers. So we'll give all these claims uh, a workout, see if it matches, and of course we'll tear it all apart and uh, see how it's built. Okay, so uh, first uh, test is to uh, use a light meter to create a polar graph and uh, see the intensity of the bulb uh, around uh, circular axes. Now, no surprise, of course, I mean, the, these type of uh, BR and PAR type bulbs obviously all are downward firing uh, with very little light on the side. Now, in terms of uh, PAR lights, they're usually uh, specified in terms of uh, directional angle. There's lots of good references on the website. Um, here's one. Uh, this is from the Department of Energy. Uh, they seem to declare that the beam angle is where the intensity is 50% of the maximum. And uh, if I look at my graph here that I came up with, this is around 1400. Uh, that puts 700 around here. Uh, well, okay, I've uh, already done the calculation. I'd have my angle gauge, and uh, you can get that. And it's telling me that this bulb has a beam angle of about 138 degrees. So it's a fairly wide beam. Okay, this is the uh, flicker test. What do we have here? Is a very simple setup. Uh, a solar cell, obviously. And uh, as the light bulb creates light, yeah, obviously the photons strike the solar cell and gets converted back to electricity. And then, of course, you can hook an oscilloscope probe to that and quickly uh, look at the output. Now, if the bulb is absolutely perfect with producing no flicker, of course, you would get no uh, AC component. Uh, and, of course, you can see here there is uh, the class 120 hertz uh, AC uh, component showing up on it, which tells me that this bulb will create a little bit of flicker. Um, now, it's not a huge amount. There's certainly been much worse bulbs I've torn down on YouTube uh, regarding flicker. Uh, the reason you get flicker, of course, is, is economy. Uh, it's very hard to create an absolute perfect DC source to drive the bulbs. Uh, okay, uh, obviously a kilowatt meter which uh, measures power and a power factor correction. Uh, you can see the meter reading 9.2 to 9.3 watts. The box had a spec of 9.5, so uh, definitely the bulb is uh, drawing less power than advertised, which is good. The power factor uh, is near unity, so that implies there is power factor correction in the bulb, and also good. Okay, this is the uh, dimmability test. Now, what's really cool about this bulb, actually, it even goes out to state that you can use uh, normal dimmers. Uh, some LED bulbs actually call out some pretty expensive dimmers. Now, this is a really cheap dimmer. Uh, we'll see how it performs. So it comes on and uh, brightens up. And when you come back to zero, it stays on. It seems to be a common characteristic in uh, these LED bulbs. Once you give them a little light, you can actually adjust them back. And... Uh, Sure, this is uh, certainly legitimately uh, smooth in its dimmability. Okay, teardown time. Uh, just like the A-shaped bulb, uh, this envelope is actually made of glass and it's been then coated with a silicone coating. I guess there's two advantages with this. Uh, obviously, if you were to crack the glass, the silicone will tend to hold the glass together. Um, also, because it has an opaque appearance, I presume that it has some value as a diffuser. So. Uh, the first thing we need to do is separate the base from the glass. Now, that's quite easy. This is uh, using an epoxy, which is fairly thermally sensitive. So, uh, a little bit more of work with a uh, hot air rework gun uh, with some care. And it should be fairly easy to separate the glass without breaking it. Okay, uh, the diffuser is off, and uh, here's the base. Now, if you look closely, you can see the diffuser is actually uh, quite broken. The uh, A-bulbs, actually, there were some reports, and certainly uh, even I was able to take the bases off uh, fairly easily with a little bit of heat. Uh, this bulb uh, was dramatically more difficult. You can see I actually cracked the globe getting it off. So uh, perhaps they've improved the uh, the gluing of the bases to the uh, the globe. Now, 
uh, same sort of filament tower that the A-bulb had, but uh, it does look different. Okay, so a real close up of the, the emitter board. Um, it is a circuit board, uh, aluminum back base and then a flexible substrate on top, kind of cool. Uh, here we see some of the strengths of Cree. They've got a, a QR code on the circuit board, obviously allowing them to track uh, boards. Potentially uh, batch to batch and even actually serial number to serial number, so a real strength. Uh, TP1 obviously is a test point, uh, and there's probably another test point around the other side here. Uh, so they can actually do uh, automated testing of the, the assembly before they, uh, they ro roll it up here. It obviously is uh, fabricated in sheets. And then if you look very closely at the dies, you can see that... Um, Pardon me. If you look very close to each LED, you can see it looks like multiple uh, dies bonded into each one. So, uh, again, a 215 volt design, just like the uh, the A base, but uh, a, a dramatically different type of uh, LED. I think it has some uh, light coming up the side as well as the top. Okay, here's the base. Uh, obviously, an uh, Edison A base, uh, AC and DC out. Now, if you look down here, of course, you can see this gray material. That's a uh, potting compound. And uh, it's often to put around assemblies because what it'll do is it'll provide a, uh, a thermal gradient from the components to the uh, edge of the surface, so it provides really hot spots. The A bulb didn't have this. Now I would speculate that because these bulbs go into uh, recessed light fixtures, uh, there's a much greater thermal load going onto the base here, so uh, they needed to go with the expense of putting the potting compound in. So uh, we'll um, we'll saw this base apart. Seems to be the only way to get these across, and then uh, take a look at the circuit board and see if it matches what was on the uh, original a, a bit. Okay, well here's the uh, AC to DC power supply converter. Uh, on the left hand side is the 120 volt entry point. On the other side here, uh, we have the uh, 220 volt nominal uh, output that goes to the emitter array. Here's a little context for it. Uh, I measure a couple volt of ripple on it, and of course that ripple becomes eventually a flicker. So. Uh, the circuit board looks different than the one uh, I tore down previously, uh, but it's very similar in uh, concept. Looks like a fuse here for safety reasons. Uh, this will be an inductor and a capacitor that will form uh, an EMI filter. Uh, you don't obviously want to conduct noise back into the power system. Uh, here is a full wave rectifier, so AC and full wave rectifier to DC. A switching controller, and then associated with switching controller is going to probably be a power MOSFET and a choke. Now this is obviously not a transformer, it looks like a single choke, so it looks like this design uh, continues the practice of a, a non-isolated design. So if your bulb ever breaks on these Cree bulbs, be very very careful because obviously you have some pretty serious voltage just showing up uh, on the contacts of the emitter array. Uh, this capacitor here is the uh, DC smoothing capacitor uh, for the output. Uh, same high quality vendor, uh, Nichicon. Um, it's a 10 microfarad 400 volt unit. Um, there's a, a bit of a dissertation I put on uh, the teardown video of the previous Cree ball talking about reliability and the game of statistics you have to play. Um, and uh, I think the same thing's going on here, yeah, even though Cree's actually yet again increased their warranty. Uh, some interesting engineering going on there. Uh, let's see. Other cool things you can see on circuit boards you can see the supply chain of the company, whether it's stretched it or not. Looks like this board was built uh, on the 21st week of 2013. Uh, that's the raw circuit board. That's about what, five months in. I'm turning this bulb down uh, first week of September, so that's actually quite impressive. They obviously have some pretty serious supply chain management going on, or these bulbs are just flying off the shelf. Um, from the time they manufactured this board to the time it's in my hand, uh, that's uh, well under two months. So that's really good. Uh, when you get a company with good supply chain management, it means that they're uh, they're um, executing well. So very cool. Uh, otherwise, it uh, looks like a really straightforward assembly. Uh, nothing overly surprising and certainly matches their previous practice. Ah, one other thing. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, this is a, a variable QR type code, and I think it's actually put on at the point of manufacture, uh, which tells me that Cree can actually uh, trace either lot numbers or even down to individual circuit board uh, numbers, which is very impressive. Uh, it really tells me that there's some uh, really strong manufacturing engineering on the go in Cree uh, to see that on uh, an inexpensive sub-assembly. Okay, well, obviously I've torn it all down. Um, very cool. The emitter array isn't quite what I expected. I was sort of expecting for a power bulb, uh, a downward firing array, but uh, Cree's obviously uh, has some pretty deep expertise in LEDs, and they've uh, continued to use this sort of filament tower, uh, and they selected a very different looking uh, LED. It looks like it has some sort of side firing capabilities, which gives this bulb uh, a fairly wide and reasonably smooth uh, output on the, um, uh, on the axes. 
Uh, the filament tower uh, standard sort of heat sink, they seem to be carrying that forward from the A bulb. Uh, the power supply is similar, but uh, yet again different. I think there's a different switching regulator, and the inductor I think is different as well. So a slightly different assembly, but conceptually very similar to what they have in the A bulb. Looks like they've improved the glue a bit. I uh, certainly had a lot of trouble getting this glass globe off. Where did it go? There it goes. Ha. I'm very glad it's got a coating because it's obviously shattered into a zillion pieces here. So, uh, very cool. Uh, another really interesting bulb coming out of the very rapidly evolving LED market.